I lost $1,152. $1,152 is how much it cost me over the past three years to subscribe to over 1,000 games available to me. And upon deciding that I was no longer going to use those 1,000 games, I ended subscription. And in doing so, I realized that the very access that I had to all of these games no longer exists. All the games I downloaded with the available free games of the month, not able to be played. And unless I maintain the subscription and spend $20 a month, $240 a year, I will not be able to play choice amounts of multiplayer games every day with my friends. This isn't something that's unique. We all know about subscription services and I know that that was a little bit doom and gloomy and it was a little bit more sobering than it was uh, disappointing when I first saw the numbers. I don't want to make this sound like I am going to say subscription services are bad, but I certainly didn't realize as much as I do now um, what being a part of a subscription service for long periods of time means whenever you decide to change your mind on something. And well, this isn't really, in the grand scheme of things, also like the biggest deal. It's just video games. But still, I think that um, as intention becomes the forefront of a lot of my decision making when it comes to playing video games, I think that acquiring the games also seems to be something that I want to focus more and more on. And when I was thinking more about it and running the numbers, I realized, holy smokes, $1,152 is the exact dollar amount of the subscription services combined. That is with the price hike increase. That is two years of a lower price in only one year of the new price hike increase. That means that the additional $3 a month that um, one of the services costs and the others went up as well. Let's say that, let's round it up to a six. That means that every year you're paying an additional $72 from what you were previously. That's a AAA title, 70 bucks. That's a full AAA title. Um, not to say that AAA titles, I keep looking back because I used to have games here. Instead, I just have, you know, Dragon Balls, which is important. I think everyone should have Dragon Balls. Very important. Rest in peace, Akira. But 70 bucks for a game, which I still purchased. I purchased plenty of games last year, um, is, is interesting. I talked in Cup 80 um, about how gaming for me is kind of taking a shift. I'm starting to invest more in PC gaming because I feel like ownership is something that's a little bit more there when it comes to the digital side of things because digital, all digital is really gonna be the future. I think we all know that. It's not necessarily exactly there yet, but I feel like it's eminent. It's very clear that a lot of these companies are leaning heavily into the all digital future. We're seeing it more and more. Game sizes are massive, updates are coming down the pike and really the, um, pre-order game when it comes to these digital deluxes seems to be the big push. You get a game or an advertised game, you get early access if you pre-order or if you pre-order, you'll also get, you know, extra digital goodies. They really are trying to push this all digital kind of thing because of convenience, maybe cost cutting, whatever it may be. Whether you love it or hate it, it is realistically what the rest of the gaming industry is going to follow doing. PC led the charge. They've been doing it for a while. PC gamers are very used to the all digital thing. That's fine. Um, I don't have anything inherently against all digital. I don't want it to sound like I'm demonizing all digital. It is what it is. I don't prefer all digital when it comes to my video games on console because the console itself um, is a tangible physical device. At least it feels that way. You go out, you purchase that device and um, it's something that is used for a very specific job. It's not a utility or a, it doesn't have many different utilities. It's just um, a gaming machine. Maybe it, you use it as an entertainment machine as well with streaming services, but most TVs offer that on the TV itself, or maybe you play media on it, DVDs or Blu-rays, which I know I do with my PlayStation 5, but still the device itself is this thing that exists just to play video games. 
great. I want the physical aspect of things to be maintained, which I discussed at length in cup 80. But when I took a look at the numbers and I was like, cool, well, let's cancel these services because I'm no longer using them and let's move over to um, PC, I realized in doing so, I got to bring over almost nothing. And I ran the numbers and $1,152, that's, that's a lot of money from just subscription services alone. And there's some necessities to those, which I'll discuss in just a moment. Today, I wanted to do milk and sugar. I haven't done milk and sugar in a while. So I have right here one tablespoon, um, but which is also eight grams of coconut palm sugar because I don't consume, oh gosh, I don't consume refined sugars. Um, I consume, you know, fruit sugars. So that's coconut palm sugar right in here. Delicious, yummy. It has the same characteristics and flavors that of a um, brown sugar, which I do, I do prefer. I like the more full bodied version of that and this is 70 grams of whole milk whole milk not almond milk not oat milk not non-fat milk but whole fat milk I don't like half and half I don't like cream I just like good old-fashioned farm milk whole milk so let's roll for four four look at that four we're gonna be doing four today which is the amber cup now for most of you who have done this for a while, who have been PC gamers for a while, I'm new to the game. And so the, my discoveries are um, newer to me and not to everybody, but sobering all the same. Uh, also, the coffee I'm drinking today is that Guatemala natural, I'm going with that guat. I'm not gonna put milk and sugar in that crazy anaerobic Colombian that's supposed to be drank black. And so we're gonna keep, or drunk black, drank black? You're supposed to drink it black. And so we'll put the milk and sugar in the, um, just the, the Guatemala. I obviously need my coffee. Gosh, it's so good. That was more sound effects than I think I should have done, but it's like warm melted ice cream. Good. That is. Anyone who says that you can't put milk and sugar in coffee is is wrong. Do I think that coffee should be drank black? Yeah, it's, it's kind of like having a steak. You just put salt on it, right? That's pretty much it. But there's nothing wrong with having a steak that has rosemary, butter, and garlic as well, okay? It's fine. Do you want that every time? No, maybe just a s steak with some salt is good. Taste the meat. But adding some flavor to it isn't bad, right? Carne asada, you put flavor in that. So having a um, milk and sugar from time to time just changes the beverage. Coffee being the base, you get a good coffee and you add milk and sugar to that. If you have a bad coffee, then maybe you need milk and sugar to make it drinkable, and that is a completely different conversation. Back to the money talk. The minimum requirement to be a part of these gaming services is around 60 bucks a year. Most of them bundle their gaming online service to, I think, 60 bucks a year. At least the last time I checked, the bases were there, the basics. Those are going up. Something that I just kind of took for what it was. Nintendo does the same thing, so does Xbox and PlayStation. They charge for their online service. Whether they need to charge to upkeep these servers or not, that is its own conversation for its own time. I'm not really there yet. And maybe on a cup, I can talk to developers. I would love to make a thing where I'm able to prolong these, have a longer form podcast version of this and talk to people and interview people in this space. If you like that, let me know. Back to the original topic, the money. It costs money to play online, a service that needs to exist in order for you to play your video games. Now, do you need to pay those online prices? to play something like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? No. To play something like 16, Final Fantasy 16? No. But to play, I don't know, some big multiplayer games that are crazy, like Helldivers 2, you do have to pay some of those prices. And so the real question comes down to, is this something that you mind? Is this something that bothers you? For me, I don't think that it necessarily bothers me, but it was sobering. The cost to play video games is a lot more than I originally anticipated because when you are doing something for long enough in the same space, the whole, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Then you kind of just take everything for face value. I'll give you an example outside of the video game space. I mentioned this in Cup 80, I am a Mac user or have been a Mac user. 
my whole life. I still use Apple products. I have been considering switching away because of the price points. Um, when I first decided that I wanted to explore PC gaming, I thought I need a somewhat powerful machine to do the job because I know from my experience that you need extra power to do anything labor intensive on something like a computer, like a Mac for instance. And so I'm used to Mac prices. I'm used to spending upwards of three to $4,000 for a machine to do a job that is somewhat labor intensive. And so originally I said, okay, I need to come up with, you know, three or four grand to get a good computer to play these video games. To which many people said, are you buying two computers? Why are you doing that? That is so much money. And most of the general conversation was like, you need maybe 1500 to $2,000 to game the way you want to game. The, thing you're talking about, $4,000 is a type of gaming that I don't even think you have the proper peripherals to enjoy. And you don't need to do that at all. You don't need four grand to play video games at high frame rates and moderate to good resolutions. Being 1080 to 1440p, which is the general prescription due to the screens that exist for these video games. 4K gaming isn't wildly popular, it does exist, but in the PC world, it's just not necessary. And that was very sobering in and of itself. That's what started me down this line of like, oh, have I been wasting my money? I don't think that playing video games on console is a waste of money, so I want to first put that out there. But what I do think is that maybe, just maybe, I was being a little ignorant. I'm willing to say that. I'm willing to say that because I didn't know and I was speaking from a point of confidence, I had convinced myself that the knowledge that I had was sufficient and also the only knowledge I needed. Which, therein lies the problem. I realized that all of my gaming that I had been doing, that I thought was budget friendly, was truly just lazy. I have access to 99% of the very titles that I have been renting, somewhat, on PC. In fact, if I wanted to play the games that I actually played, which is not that many, I could spend one quarter of the amount on PC to own the titles that I have played over the course of these past three years. I'm just speaking into the subscription service that I paid for, for Game Pass Ultimate, and PlayStation Plus Premium. I'm not speaking into Nintendo Switch Online, which is 80 bucks a month, and or 70 bucks, is it 69 or 79? Whatever, let's just say 80. And I'm not speaking into any other service. I am simply saying that the Xbox and PlayStation subscription services that I, and as well as you probably subscribe to, in the three years of me owning these devices, because that is pretty much the life cycle that we've had so far, maybe longer if you've been a part of these services, can it be, what, 11.52 divided by 70? Here comes the quick math. That's gonna be, what, 15, 15 games? Maybe more? That's, uh, yeah, it's gonna be 16 games. 16 games. 16 AAA titles. Have you played more than 16 AAA titles over the course of the past three years? And of those 16 AAA titles, did you purchase them full price? Because I know that from something that I have realized, let me just close this window real quick. You don't have to pay full price ever on PC. That's something that I'm very, very not familiar with. I'm not familiar with these Steam sales, also with different websites that sell games for cheaper. I am buying deluxe games for almost no money. And I own them in my library forever. I honestly, make this video sitting back and going, I was such an idiot. I genuinely feel like I've wasted three years worth of money just because I wasn't willing to kind of look past my nose and be like, no, dude, there is a simpler, more cost-effective way of doing these things. I mean, if I add it all together, 1152 plus 500 plus 500, if I don't account for the fact that I've purchased, well, I've returned them, so I never really actually lost money on them. I did buy two Series S's, technically. So let's just say I never bought a Series S and let's stick to 500. I've spent over the past three years, $2,152. Well, if we add tax, whatever, let's just say 2,300 bucks 
for two devices, an Xbox and a PlayStation and a subscription service. That's the equivalent of maybe purchasing a PC and then not buying any games, I guess. Because now that I don't subscribe to anything, I effectively have devices that I can play games that I already owned. Or if I didn't spend extra money on other games, right? I would have nothing. I would be sitting on a device. My Xbox is a perfect example of this. Since I have decided not to continue with Game Pass Ultimate, my Xbox Series S has two games purchased for it. Two, Lego Star Wars and no, one, Lego Star Wars. That's it. Because the Starfield game that I have purchased is actually just the deluxe upgrade so I could play it early and stream it. I own one game on my Xbox, at least my profile that I had created with the Series S. I have an older profile that I had lost my codes for. Sure, I could play Fortnite, I could play Apex Legends, but I've a lot, kind of lost interest in that. I'm just sitting here going, I don't even have any games. And that's how I feel like the companies kind of get you. Because with these new services, they say, hey, for $18 a month, you can play 700 plus games on PlayStation or 400 plus games on Xbox. So you're sitting there going, holy cow, look at this thing. 400 games. But if for some reason you decide to do something like, I want to try a different system. I want to save a couple bucks or I want to take a step back and maybe do something else. You leave with nothing. At least that's what happened to me. Maybe you're someone who is different when it comes to this kind of thing. Maybe you do gaming different. Maybe you um, silence your Discord when you decide to make a video in your office. Because if you do, then you're far better than I on all of those markers. But I know that I sitting back and kind of just looking at the grand landscape and thinking to myself, I want to make decisions that are going to provide me with the most access, um, but also allow me to have the longest lasting relationship with this hobby. I look at what currently exists and what's currently the focus from a lot of these companies. And I realize a couple things. One, this is very much so the future of access, rentals. PlayStation, Xbox isn't new to this. Adobe, one of the pioneers, one of the number biggest creative platforms that exists. And by platforms, I have a suite of, of applications. Used to sell for thousands of dollars for multiple applications. Every season, you buy the upgrade of that, but you would own the license itself. You could bootleg it if you wanted to, and maybe they were losing money that way. I don't know, but you used to own the very products themselves. That doesn't exist anymore. Microsoft, similar with their Office uh, Suite, Word, Excel, all these gold standards when it comes to office work and productivity, these subscription bases. Is it easier for offices to just buy subscriptions and buy licenses based on subscription and move forward? Maybe, maybe it's more convenient, but still we see that shift to powerhouses, to household names that are completely outside of the gaming world decide to do stuff like that. And it's been years, this isn't new. This has been a very long time since they've done this. I wanna say over a decade. I could be wrong, but it's been a long time since they've switched to the subscription model. So you then ask yourself, is this really the way we're gonna be going about things? Photo editing software that I use, you have two options. You can spend $9 a month, $50 a year, or $300 once. But then there's the confidence thing, like will this be supported for long enough, $300? Am I going to be in trouble because the subscription service is really taking over? You don't, I don't know. Will the new updates be permanently a part of this license, right? And this is outside of the gaming space. But if you look outside and then apply that information in, it then further solidifies and grants me confidence to say that the future of applications seems to be, you heard it right, folks, subscription. I don't think that all gaming 
will be this way, but Ubisoft decides to bring games to the subscription services if you would like to just rent them. And I don't know if renting them is even the best way to put it. Um, other, the EA, similar. All these big powerhouses. Who's next? Is Square Enix gonna do this and say, you can play our games for $12 a month? I don't know. Is, what is the one? Montreal? Who, who makes God of War? I forgot. Are they gonna do it? I don't know. But what I do know is that if this is the future of gaming on a console, right? EA Play is still available elsewhere, but if this is the future of gaming on a console, you purchase a device, a box, a direct TV box. You guys remember those? Maybe you still use them. But you purchase a cable box and then pay a monthly service to use that piece of hardware. I don't know if I want to do that. And yes, I know you can still purchase digitally and physically that still exists. I did. We're not there yet. But it seems that the big push from a lot of these companies is to further feed this subscription model in the console gaming space. These subscriptions exist outside of console gaming, but it seems a lot less of a viable option. And also it doesn't seem like people who play on PC are buying into it. Game Pass on PC exists, but it doesn't look like the user base is even close to what Game Pass on console has. And also the games available on Game Pass with PC seem a lot less than what the PC player base is using. With websites like CD Keys or Steam Sales or any of the other ones that exist, it seems that purchasing games isn't overly expensive. And the thought that I have a game that exists on all devices that I can run this forever until I decide to no longer play it is a lot more appealing to me than what just happened. The realization that I've spent $1,152 and because I decided that I want to switch platforms, zero of that comes with me. You hear that? Zero. And because I decided to end my subscription with PlayStation, game saves don't even stay in the cloud anymore. Hmm. How interesting is that? Imagine all the data that you've spent, all of the time that you've dedicated to a game is now tied to your hardware only. Yeah, I know that happens with PC too, but the backing up of hardware is a lot easier on a PC than it is on a PlayStation or Xbox. I'm sure people back up their stuff, but it's not as easy. This was a sobering realization in another tick in the category of maybe I was wrong. Maybe uh, I spent a little too much time focusing on the wrong thing, majoring on the minors and uh, thinking that the convenience that I was granted was simply only convenience due to comfortability and not convenience due to true actual convenience. The convenience that you get from playing games on console over PC, they're there. They certainly are. It's a very easy way to go about things. But when you take a step back and you look at the hobby of playing video games as a whole, that's a very different conversation. And to a lot of us, this is more than just a pastime. If you're watching a video about a dad talking about video games and drinking coffee, clearly the subject matter of video games is important to you. This is something you wanna be a part of. This is a hobby of yours that you find valuable. And so these conversations are a little bit further than I just wanna turn on a system and zone out for 25 minutes. It's a very different thing. If you're in your mid thirties and you're playing video games, it clearly is a hobby. And that's great. I think that video games is one of the greatest hobbies that I have. And I hope that others value it the same, at least for them. But this was crazy. Let me know if you think it's crazy. Maybe I'm being a little too much about it, but those numbers are big. I don't make that much. That being said, I enjoy making these cups of coffee and talking to you guys. This cup was very delicious. Milk and sugar in your coffee, a great addition to your cup. Hopefully you do it, try it out. Do measure your ingredients always. Eyeballing it is great for the first time, but for second, third, fourth, and 10th, you're gonna wanna make sure you can hit that recipe over and over again. That being said, you guys have a great rest of your day. Enjoy, and uh, as always, happy gaming.